morning one and all a very warm morning to you professor rajneesh arora principal dr vikramjeet singh my co convener mr chetan mr vijay dr hemant madam manju sharma dr chavi mangla mr manoj bindal madam urvashi mr sushil rajpal and dear most students i welcome you all to the six days online workshop on communication skills from 24th to 29th i also take this opportunity to welcome one of our speakers dr aparna from hau who has very graciously joined today communication skills as we all know is one of the most important life skills being able to communicate effectively can help many aspects of our lives from professional career to social gathering to our personal lives communication can be done in many ways verbal written or visual all these are essential soft skills because of covid-19 and the lockdown life for us has taken an altogether different turn and communication is one part of life that has also had the impact of this new situation this workshop is a small effort to help all the students who have been literally locked inside their homes to help them with their community communication skills and for this I have experts from various on day 1 as you all know professor rajneesh arora has very graciously consented to be the keynote speaker on day 2 we have dr deepthi dharmani from cdlu sirsa and on day 3 dr aparna from hau hisar the next two days students you will be interacting with your own teachers from the college i would not like to come for long between you all and our very learned and esteemed speaker so a few words about dr rajneesh arora dr rajneesh arora is a professor and director at english and foreign languages university lucknow campus he has been a teacher and a te teachers trainer mind you he has been training teachers also for more than 25 years before joining efl university in 1994 he worked in the regional institute of english chandigarh for about 4 years from 1990 to 1994 he did his phd in the area of discourse analysis of drama from punjab university chandigarh his first ma is in the area of english literature from kurukshetra university kurukshetra for his mlit research and pgdte project he worked in the area of phonetics and phonology he was awarded the very prestigious british council hornby trust scholarship in 2003 and 4 for his ma in language teaching in lancaster university uk he was also a visiting fellow in the university of warwick uk in 2 2008 he has presented papers given talks organized workshops in several national and international conferences he has written two textbooks and a number of articles in books and journals and has been guiding research scholars at mphil and phd levels he has guided as many as 20 research scholars for mphil dissertation and 18 for the phd thesis which is a huge number in the areas of linguistics literature and english language teaching his current interests include discourse analysis pragmatics language of advertising and english language teaching in india i welcome you sir on behalf of dayanand college sir for your session with that Uh, a few things for the students today's session is going to be at 10 o'clock the rest of the days you will be joining at 11:30 am sir i would also like to share with you 
that for this communication skills workshop, we have students not only from our college, but from other colleges of the town also, which makes us very happy and proud. I once again thank Dr. Rajneesh Aroda for consenting to be the keynote speaker and for giving us time from his very busy schedule. And over to you, sir, Dr. Rajneesh Aroda. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam, for the good words. Um, at the outset, I would like to thank um, uh, Dr. Uh, Vikram Jeet Singh, Principal of the College Star, and Dr. Shami Nagpal, convener of the workshop, for inviting me to the workshop. Uh, I really feel honored. Um, well, it's a six days online training workshop on communication skills for students. So my focus will be uh, mainly on students, but I'll be talking about teachers also. Uh, I generally like to uh, begin with the story of an old lady and uh, her parrot. We all have heard about parrots who can speak. An old lady had a parrot who could speak, but the only thing the parrot could say was, who's it? Who's it? So whoever came home, this parrot would say, who's it? One day, this lady was away, away from home. A plumber came home. He gave a knock at the door. Who's it? The parrot said as usual. It's the plumber lady. The plumber thought it was the lady inside. Who's it? It's the plumber lady. Who's it? It's the plumber lady. Who's it? It's the plumber lady. Now the plumber had a heart condition. He was so confused that he had a heart attack. He had a heart failure and he dropped dead on the floor. The lady comes back looks at the plumber lying dead on the floor and screams, oh my God, who is it? This time, the plumber says, this time the parrot says, it's the plumber lady. The parrot learned its language. What is it? Structural approach, repetition, drills. That's what we did when I was in school. We talked about substitution tables. So that was structural approach for us. Very soon, we started talking about communicative language teaching because the focus was on communication then from uh, gr grammar to communication. With structural approach, structure was important, grammar was important. And when we talked about communicative language teaching, communication became important because it's a workshop on communication skills. It's important to uh, relate it to communicative language teaching. Now, this, there's a misconception that communication skills are about English speaking skills. It's about all the languages. It's about verbal communication. It's about non-verbal communication. It's about everything. It's about gestures. It's about uh, trying to interpret things. It's all about interpretation. It's all about analysis. So when we talk about communicative language teaching, the concept came from Adele Himes' uh, concept, communicative competence. Now, what is communicative competence? Uh, the goal of language teaching is to improve the communicative competence of the learners, not just grammatical competence. That means we should know what to say in what situation that should be appropriate for that purpose. Now, when we talk about communicative competence, we have three or four dimensions of communicative competence. People have talked about it. The first one is linguistic competence, which is the same thing as grammatical competence. Grammatical competence the knowledge of grammar, your ability to use grammatically correct sentences. And at one time it was 
thought that if you know your grammar, you can communicate. We had many teaching shops that focused on grammar at one time long ago when I was in school perhaps, and even later also when people didn't know what communication was all about, the focus was on grammar. So if you know your grammar, you know communication. So that was uh, what people thought. Another aspect, this is just one of the aspects of you know, linguistic competence. Now another is sociolinguistic competence. Now what is a sociolinguistic competence? I mean, what is sociolinguistics? I mean, I must tell you that it's, it's, it's language in relation to society, language in relation to society. Uh, if I know what an expression mean in its social context, I have sociolinguistic competence. Ram uh, Nam Satya Hai, right? When do we say it? We all know we say it, or this is reserved for a particular occasion. We can't utter it elsewhere, but there's nothing wrong in it. Literal meaning is fine, but because our community, because our society, because the way we learned language, we were told that this expression is reserved, this expression is restricted to just one occasion. And we all know it. We can't utter it in somebody's wedding. So this is your sociolinguistic competence. Uh, well, uh, uh, it, when I when I talk about uh, you know communication, I won't restrict it to just English. And as I said, that it's a miscommunication that communication skills are about English. Uh, well, uh, in our context, you know, English could be the main language because we use it as a second language, and in some countries, foreign language also. And, and that's why the focus can be on communication uh, on, on English, but but communication skills is about communication, communicating in any language for that matter. Next is next dimension, uh, you know, in communicative language teaching is uh, discourse competence. What is discourse competence? Uh, how one sentence is linked to the next sentence in a logical order, in a logical way. This is about connectedness, connectedness of uh, sentences, connectedness of ideas. Uh, we all remember, you know, when I, when, when we wrote our first essay, uh, an essay on cow, for example, um, uh, we wrote just 10 sentences and uh, we never bothered whether they were connected or not. They were given to us many a time and, and uh, we copied it in the classroom and uh, we didn't bother about, uh, you know, other things. And uh, the same was the case with other essays. We, 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 we uh, wrote things uh, when uh, we, we didn't write things, things came to us. Uh, the product was given to us by the teacher and the focus was not on the process writing, but on the product. It was, it was given to us and we needed to remember that and write the same thing in the classroom. So, so whoever could write well got a very good marks. So that was, that was uh, your essay. But today, I mean, when you talk about communication, we talk about process writing because, because uh, when you talk about skills, communication skills, listening, speaking, reading and writing among so many other things, we don't have any shortcut. We learn listening by listening. We learn writing by writing. We learn speaking through speaking. And we learn reading through reading. There's no shortcut. There's no shortcut. So this is where the focus is on, with, where, where the focus should be on communication skills. So, so I was talking about uh, discourse competence. Uh, not just sentences, not just, uh, you know, ideas, but how one paragraph follows another paragraph in a logical order, that's also your discourse competence. Uh, you know, one essay may be more readable than the other, that may be because, you know, uh, discoursely, you know, it's been written in a way that it becomes more readable than the other piece. And, and we as teachers also know that uh, for the same content, we give different marks because uh, one is, you know, more readable than the other. One has, you know, organized ideas in a way that appeals to you that, you know, 
uh, pushes you to give you know some students more marks than others so so this is this is what uh, discourse competence is all about how sentences are linked to each other in a logical way ideas expressions then comes strategic competence now strategic competence is very very important uh, using strategies to communicate now what could be these strategies actually when we uh, when we speak when we write uh, we have the effect in mind we all have the effect in mind we we calculate that effect and 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 use our utterances we come out with utterances we we write something because we have the goal in mind we have the uh, perlocution in mind i mean if i if i can uh, briefly talk about uh, speech act theory in a very simple way uh, if we talk, if i talk about locution uh, the very act of saying something is locution and elocution is what are we trying to do in saying something because in speech act theory they say that saying something is equal to doing something so so uh, when when we speak we may issue a warning we may issue a threat we may make a request we can give orders we may praise we may insult we may reprimand we may be sarcastic we can do all kinds of things using language and whatever we do uh, whatever we say we do things with language and it's possible to give 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 you know speech act label to these utterances whether in its at micro level or macro level and uh, uh you know it's possible to talk about uh, the effect your utterances your writing may have on others uh, so that would be perlocution that would be effect we all calculate the effect so this aspect must be taken care of in communication skills that that we all want to achieve a certain effect and 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 that's how and that's that's how we want to uh, you know speak that's how uh, we want to go ahead with our uh, communication uh well uh, uh when 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 we when we talk about uh, you know communication there are so many other things also i mean this formality and informality for example that's part of your strategy now uh, if you know your communication skills you would know when to be polite when to be impolite when to be formal when to be informal because uh it's it's very easy people have talked about formality and formality but many people wouldn't understand what is formal and informal people mix things and and mixing may not always be inappropriate it may be possible it may be appropriate in certain contexts you can mix formal and informal but you should know what effect it would create if it goes to you know a particular person an organization wherever so that that effect you must calculate beforehand when you write when you speak when you do things with with language and and uh, because i'm talking about strategic competence here we all know that we can achieve certain effects by using impoliteness so impoliteness may not always be natural it can be put on also because we have some effect in mind and to achieve that effect we are using impoliteness uh, so so and we can be uh, you know uh, unconsciously we can be you know spontaneously impolite also we all know that but politeness can be your impoliteness or politeness can be strategically used to achieve effect we all know it now uh, it's not just you know uh, impoliteness that gets the work done uh, you can be very very polite i mean they say that uh, you know you don't need to kill other with weapons you can kill them with your love also you can you can give your attention uh, and 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 you don't kill others through hatred you 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 kill them with your with with your love what do i mean by this i mean it affects you know the other person's individuality nakara ho jata hai aadmi so 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 even you know giving attention to the person saying good things about the person all these are strategic and in communication skills all these things work and students must know teachers must know how to convey this to students and students must know what you know 
a certain utterance means in certain contexts because the same utterance may mean so many different things in different contexts. So, so the knowledge of formality or informality, formal language and informal language is important, just as you should know what is polite and what is uh, impolite. Um, if, if uh, you know, I mean, you send a message to your supervisor, I'm talking to students. I mean, if, you, if, you, if you're writing a thesis and you say, please go through my essay and give your comments. I mean, just by using please, you, you cannot, uh, you're not making it polite. You're very direct. I mean, you need to say perhaps, you know, could you please go through my essay and give your comments? Um, I wanted to show you my essay. So all these things you can do in so many different ways, but yes, uh, you know, please in itself would not make it, uh, uh, you can say a request. Uh, mm, uh, I want to talk to you and I wanted to talk to you. I mean, this is just for students, you know. Uh, I want to talk to you present tense. I wanted to talk to you past tense, but both, both these utterances can be said in in, in present tense, uh, when you want to be more polite, you should say, I wanted to talk to you. And, and uh, direct would be, I want to talk to you. You are assertive. You are not giving the other person any choice. And when you say, I wanted to talk to you, you're giving Bilkul the other person a choice. I mean, and, but I'm not sure whether you would give me time or not, whether you're interested in this or not. So you're giving the other person a choice. I mean, that is, that is very direct in Haryanvi and, and, and uh, you are asserting. So, so these differences in language, I mean, of course, these can be compared along, uh, you, know, you know, across languages also and translation always is not possible. And uh, as I say that equivalent expressions may not be equally polite or impolite, but here it was an easy example. I thought, you know, I must tell students that, you know, this, this uh, past tense can be used to, 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 to make an utterance more polite also. The nuances of language, uh, you know, uh, your own language, you understand, but when it comes to second language, language it uh, so, so we, we uh, there's some feeling Hello. Yeah. So, so uh, present tense has categorical modality, right? Uh, is it polite or impolite? I mean, this, this, this could be polite within Haryanvi language. If you try to translate it, it could be it could be impolite. Uh, uh, dialectal differences. I mean, if if you if you if you look at you know uh, you know this uh, languages. Uh, let's let's talk about you know Haryanvi and Punjabi. I mean, if you are in, for example, Rajpura. I mean, Rajpura is a boundary of uh, border of Punjab, Haryana. So they say, uh, ki pata. What do I know? Uh, ki pata. Mujhe kya pata? And, and if you come to Ambala, for example, Narayangar, Sadhora, you say, Mannu kya pata? Mannu kya pata? So, Mannu becomes Mannu, right? And you come further, Manna ke pata? I mean, this is proper Haryanvi, I guess. Manna ke pata? And if you go a little further, Manna ke bera, at lexical level also, you change it. So, these are dialectal differences. I mean, uh, one thing can be said in so many ways. Uh, these things are not uh, ungrammatical, but the problem is that when we don't understand the difference between a dialect and the language uh, or a group of languages, uh, we may make mistakes and we can consider certain things ungrammatical. Uh, Geoffrey Bycott, for example, uh, when he would uh, you know do commentary, he would say run. That is because he came from Yorkshire. He speaks Yorkshire accent of English and therefore, uh, you know, a Yorkshire uh, dialect of English and therefore he says run and even come becomes kum in Yorkshire dialect. So, so there's nothing wrong in that. He's not speaking wrong English. Pronunciation is not wrong. Only when you compare it with the standard form, you may say, well, this is not how we pronounce it in the standard English, but, but yes, in Yorkshire dialect, it's, 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 it's permitted. So, so the, the, the ideas about something correct or something incorrect that are also, uh, you know, uh, you know, problematic actually. Um, communication skills mean different things for different people, right? If you are a sports commentator, you need different kind of vocabulary, different kind of skills. 
If you're a journalist, again, you may uh, need a different kind of vocabulary, different kind of skills again. Uh, if you are an academic researcher, again, I mean, you need academic writing skills. There's so much focus on academic writing skills today. And uh, this is very important because in India, we have started taking care of uh, plagiarism in a very serious way. And it has been a problem, uh, you know, and, and uh, now our government is also very serious about it. We need to, you know, uh, make use of software that check plagiarism. Uh, when we talk about you know academic writing skills, we can say well we don't use contractions, we don't use absolutes, uh, we don't use you know uh, confusing negatives for example, we don't use unspecific words vocabulary, uh, we don't use I or we. I mean if 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 uh, you know these things are taught to you, you are learning your academic writing skills along with uh, so many other things, but. Uh, you know, certain things, you know, require attention. For example, the use of I and V. I mean, is it appropriate to use I and V for researchers? Uh, mm, well, again, I mean, uh, there are two opinions about it. Uh, many people, many professors would insist that don't use I or V because, because uh, that's not, uh, you know, you're, you're bringing informality into it. Uh, you just, uh, you know, say the researcher right or use passive voice for example so many people even today insist that use passive voice or you use you know the researcher don't don't say you know i or we i mean that's not done but there's another school of thought uh, maybe critical pedagogy there we say that there's no harm in using i or we why because if you use i that will give you a sense of ownership you own your writing when you write an essay, when you write an article, and if you say I, if you begin with I, if you, you know, use uh, such utterances uh, in active voice and you use I, you are getting empowered, right? You own your essay, you own your writing, and 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 that's very important. Um, uh, they say that the author, the writer, the student, when they write something, they should be able to listen to their own voice. They should be able to hear their own voice. The writer's voice should be heard, right? And one way of achieving this is uh, you be assertive and say I, right? But, but then, as I said, that you need to talk about uh, 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 these things with your professors and find out what they want and what is more appropriate in your context. And this is also about learning communication because you're communicating with your readers in, in, in writing your thesis also. So, so um, here I would like to, you know, tell you uh, something, uh, you know, that I'm aware of. Uh, when I was in Lancaster, um, uh, there was an informal study, somebody did it for the sake of writing an essay, and that was a comparison between British students and uh, uh, Indian students. Uh, uh, basically, you know, the difference between Europeans and, uh, you know, Indian students. And, um, uh, the person concluded, the researcher concluded that, uh, uh, that was a mini research, that Indian students are very good at sit down examinations when they write an exam. I mean, three hour exam, two hour exam, sitting in a particular place, they, they do very well. Whereas, uh, you know, Britishers do uh, better in take home assignments. Right there, you need to produce something very original. Now things have changed, perhaps you know, and and uh, we have also started giving take-home assignments. We focus on uh, writing. We focus on we we stress on uh, you know writing uh, you know good papers and publishing them. So so the focus you know is now on process writing and teaching students uh, and preparing students for this communication situation that they have to produce a very good essay, a very good paper. Uh, for uh, readers, for other researchers, and, and that is very important. Uh, uh, why, you know, Indian students uh, did not do well? Because they were not taught process writing. They were never given take-home assignments. So all the focus was on remembering things uh, and, and uh, you know, just uh, recalling them at the time of uh, exam or reproducing them. So that, that was a memory test. Even today, you know, that holds good. We have, you know, uh, you know, sit down examinations, but I would say that if alongside, I mean, if they have, uh, you know, uh, assignments also, I think that will create a very good communication situation and our students would uh, learn a lot. 
uh, something about uh, pronunciation, uh, because again, uh, in, in the concept note also, uh, this was one of the aspect you know mentioned. Uh, pronunciation. Uh, we we do a subject called phonetics, uh, uh, phonetics or phonetics of English or phonology or whatever. Uh, well, when we are doing it as a subject, it's fine. But uh, you know, too much focus on uh, correct pronunciation, too much focus on standard forms. You know, is counterproductive. I mean, we have seen people who who were given communications training. Uh, in call center industry, overnight they become became Britishers, Americans. Uh, how did it happen? Uh, it happened because you know they wanted to earn, they wanted to uh, you know get a lot of money, and uh, yes, jobs were available. Overnight, people became uh, you know went very close to Britishers or Americans. Why? Because there was a big motivation, but that happened you know at a price. That happened you know at a cost the cost of your identity the cost of your identity uh, when people speak to you uh, they should be able to have an idea that you're from haryana you're from punjab you're from tamil nadu you're from kerala so so you're from rajasthan so so your language is your identity right and if you speak uh, english in a way that uh, you know that hides your identity well that can be purposeful i mean you 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 can aim to do that uh, that may be desirable also in some situations, uh, but uh, my focus is on being an informed person where you take an informed decision. This is what would happen to me if I, you know, change my pronunciation, if I use standard forms. Uh, the, the best thing would be to be able to switch from, uh, you know, uh, one form to another, uh, one kind of intonation to another, if you can help it, I think that'd be the best thing to do. Uh, it's about, you know, creating right kind of effect at right time. So variation is important. Modulation is important. And that's possible when you use the right kind of intonation for effect. We use it in our own language. Uh, actors make use of it, you know. So that is their communication situation. And, and they're successful because they can modulate their voice uh, very well. Um, uh, there was also a mention about uh, verbal and non-verbal communication, as I said earlier also. I mean, it's not just about verbal, it's not just about words, it's also about non-verbal communication. Uh, uh, we, when, we, when we go through magazines, uh, we look at, uh, you know, advertising, advertisements, print advertisements, there are lots of advertisements at the internet also, uh, on television also. So it's a combination of the verbal and the visual. So together, the verbal and the visual create an effect for us to interpret things. That's a communication situation, right? And, and uh, uh, the verbal and the visual are mixed in such a way that they produce conflicting meanings, right? And that's purposely done because, because you know, uh, they want that you should discuss this. They want that it should influence different people in a different way. It should work with men in a way. It should work with women in a certain way. It should work with children in a, in a different way. Everybody should be affected. Everybody should be influenced. That is what the focus of advertising is. Uh, so copywriters uh, know this and they exploit it. If they combine verbal and the visual in such a way that they, they either reinforce each other's meaning or they may produce mutually conflicting meanings. So, 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 so our, our students, uh, you know, when they learn communication skills, they should have a good idea of, you know, how visual communication is interpreted. And let me tell you that, uh, you know, lots of books we have around, uh, you know, on, on teaching communication skills, on communication and uh, in engineering colleges, I mean, uh, when you teach, you have all these books uh, with you. Um, uh, you you go to the classroom, you teach, you talk about barriers to communication, right? Just by talking about barriers to communication, uh, you would not give them a good idea. I mean, let them actually use the language and 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 uh, find out what actually the barriers are. So learning by doing. So there's no shortcut, as I said earlier. Also, speaking by speaking, 
listening by listening again for as far as listening is concerned many people think that you know their listening is very good i for example i'm a very bad listener because my attention span is very short and i i admit it because because you know uh, halfway through you know i switch off and uh, this happens even today so my listening is really very bad i really need to concentrate very hard to listen to others but this is a skill that we must all learn we must teach in the classroom we must give students opportunities to 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 practice you know practice listening so so when i say we must give opportunities i'm i'm talking to teachers but there's a concept called learner autonomy that a uh, learner has to take responsibility for his or her own uh, learning uh the learner has to be independent and yes they are independent we have internet for example uh now i mean we are in this pandemic situation if i talk about uh, you know uh the problem of online teaching i mean uh, uh you know i mean we have to gear ourselves for a different kind of communication for example i mean when i'm talking to you i know my limitation when i'm talking to you now i know that i don't have access to uh, your body language Uh, body language uh, body language of my 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 listeners uh, the audience uh, the students uh, i don't have uh, this opportunity right now uh, in a face to face situation for example uh, i can uh, look at people i can uh, decide in the middle of the lecture whether you know i'm going in right direction or not whether somebody is interested in what i'm saying or not uh, many a time when uh, you know things are already heard when when students have heard them already they find it very boring and how do i get an idea that you know uh, i'm talking about interesting things or boring things or the students are interested or disinterested by looking at them and then i must switch on to something very interesting i must switch on to something new uh, because because that's what my strategy should be in that communication situation but that is not available to us uh, you know in in this situation in this pandemic situation where uh, where uh, online teaching for example is forced upon us by circumstances uh, we have to live with it for some time uh, we uh, today talk about blended teaching also blended learning also but uh, this is not blended uh, in a way that uh, we are today uh, doing online teaching only yes i mean part of semester we did uh, you know uh, you know face to face and if you want to call it blended in that way it, it may be but uh, if you look at you know government's proposal ugc's proposal they say that uh, you know uh, uh, in the times to come in the coming semesters we need to have 25% of the content you know uh, on the website and uh, we should be meeting students online for 25% of classes and that's a good very good idea we should be prepared for any eventuality later on also so this is a situation we must we have to live with and and we need to uh, gear ourselves uh, for the new communication situation so 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 our success uh, in communication will depend on how effective we are in conveying our ideas to the students in the best possible way so online teaching within online teaching for example there there will be so many learning platforms available very soon and the government is thinking about this and they'll be made freely available uh, you know uh, you know on the websites for students and and uh, some universities have already you know uh, 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 you know they 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 understood the situation and they've already you know uh, they've already chosen uh, you know this uh, learning platforms for students online learning platforms online learning uh, you know systems for students i think uh, you know uh, we'll be successful uh, in a way that we should be but the uh, limitations will remain face to face of course nothing can match face to face and in this situation we have to you know prepare ourselves for a different kind of uh, you know uh, communication situation uh when i talk about going back to this verbal and the visual uh as i say that all the communication situations are about making sense of the world uh trying to uh make meanings making sense of 
texts that are around, whether they are verbal or visual, we are reading a story, we are at the internet, we are listening to our professors, teachers, we are listening to our peers. Uh, that's the communication situation and continuously we are trying to make sense of what they are saying. And that's true of all the communication situations for that matter. And there's a play of multiple meanings also. We must understand that, you know, utterances may have multiple meanings. Some of this could be intended and some of this would not be intended. Some, sometimes multiple meanings are not intended and, and, and you know, sometimes they may create problems also. Um, here, I would like to make a difference between interpretation and analysis because I'm into discourse analysis myself. And, and uh, you know, this is very important, uh, you know, of a communication situation, because as students, as, as researchers, uh, uh, as, as interpreters, we, we try to interpret things, we try to make meanings, uh, we may have our preferred interpretation, but that's not enough, because lots of interpretations are possible uh, of the same things. Um, um, we need to become analysts. We need to understand that uh, there can be so many interpretations and each interpretation should be conditionally valid. That is, you know, you need to create a context for each interpretation. Now this interpretation, interpretation one is valid in such and such situation. Interpretation two is valid in such and such situation and interpretation three is valid in such and such conditions. This is what you need to state as researchers. You are doing an analysis, right? So you can't just, you know, uh, you know, sit at, uh, you know, or limit yourself to just one interpretation. And if you, if you go beyond that, if you think of the context of, you know, a communication situation, you are not just an interpreter, you are an analyst. You're not just trying to, uh, uh, you know, make sense of, uh, the world in one way, uh, you are trying to understand the reality in so many different ways from different points of view, from different angles and from, from others viewpoints, you know, I mean, how others would interpret this, you know, if they look at it. So that is very important about, you know, uh, communication uh, situation. Um, um, as I said that, um, you know, in online teaching, you know, one aspect is missing. Uh, we need to think of strategies, uh, ways, how we can be more effective in online, you know, uh, when we, when we do online teaching for that matter, that's a new reality that's, that's, that's forced upon us by circumstances, as I already said. So, so uh, uh, we need to be careful. We need to be attentive. We need to, uh, you know, make informed decisions but as teachers while communicating ideas to students it is very important for us to take everyone along it's very important to take everyone along because because if you focus on a few students you would think that communication has happened whereas the goal of communication in the classroom is that everybody you know walks together. And if I can borrow a political uh, slogan, Sabka Saath Sabka Vikas, uh, critical pedagogy is about Sabka Saath Sabka Vikas. You have to take uh, everyone along. Nobody should be left behind. That's what your sh focus should be. And that is uh, what we mean by a real communication in the classroom. For me, I mean, for, for, for you, communication would not take place if everybody has not understood, if everybody has not achieved what you wanted to achieve as a teacher, what we wanted to achieve as a teacher. So that should be the focus. And the same goes with the students also. The students must strive to, you know, convey their ideas to the teachers in the best possible way. And, and uh, we as teachers need to be very patient when we deal with students because they are trying to communicate with us and we are trying to communicate with them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I wish there were questions, though we've been asking the students to put the questions in the chat box, but I don't see any questions in the chat box. But I'd like to thank you from the bottom of my heart 
for putting everything in such a simple way to these students i am sure students must have learned a lot and there are a few things which they especially need to carry home the things that you have told them that we should know what to say in what situation and grammar is not the only thing that's important because we see our college being in a rural area we see that a lot of students keep mugging up grammar so that is a very good thing that you have shared with them also the students i'm sure must have learned that language is important in relation to the society and the most important learning i think they must carry is the difference between the rote learning and the processes though we have you know introduced uh, things like assignments and um, other presentations and all but still the students depend a lot on the rote learning so thank you sir for telling them all that and another thing this is for the students which i think you should take home is that it is you as professor rajneesh arora said that learner has to take the responsibility so it is you all who have to take the responsibility and to make sure that how much can you learn and in what way can you learn and we all know sir as you said that the online teaching and learning has its own limitations and we are all a part of it and we'll try to learn things with these limitations and go ahead thank you so much sir um our principal sir is busy in another session otherwise he would have loved to interact with you but you know uh, the business of the administrative post in spite of wanting to be here he could not be here so i thank you uh, again on his behalf on behalf of the college on behalf of all the students and another thing sir i would like to share with you is that it is not students only from the town as i told you are present when i was looking at the chat box there are students from as far as ambala who have joined this session so that i guess is a plus point of the online session if it had been an offline session it would have been only for our college and now that it's an online session there are students from other colleges not only from other colleges of the town but from other districts also so with that i thank you once again sir and i'm sure we would meet some other time for more learning from you thank you sure, sir sure. thank you thank you